Hello viewers, good evening, welcome back to Nocturnal Siege and tonight we're going to discuss another special topic and I bet many of you here who are, you know, wondering why they probably did not make the cut when applying for the colleges or universities that they want to be part of, I made this special segment for you. We'll focus particularly on one certain subject that I believe many would not deny its difficulty, math. Okay, let me establish the context first, where my motivation for making this video has come from. Last Saturday, okay, oh yeah, that was just yesterday, today is Sunday, I took the entrance exam for graduate studies admissions and I already expected that we, we, would, we would be tested even if the degree program I'm applying for is more on the liberal arts, it's communication, I was still, tes I was still uh, tested on my quantitative skills. So I recall uh, um, being made to solve problems such as if the whistle blow if a whistle blows every 12 minutes and then a bell rings every every 14 minutes and they both ring at 12 noon what time of the day after 12 noon would they start ringing together again with uh, what what time now after careful thought okay I admit I did not answer that question was left blank because I I focus more on problems on items that I was very confident in answering now after about two hours post test okay of reflecting on the possible way of solving that problem I realized that I could have just found the least common multiple for 12 and 14 well I don't know if that's that would lead me to the right answer, but it quite makes sense. When I analyzed the, the types of problems that usually come out on entrance tests, and not just entrance tests, even in formal schools, when it's not about getting admitted, but about passing a certain subject, I noticed that when it comes to word problems, students are often made to deal with problems that they find irrelevant. Going back to my experience, who cares what time the whistle and the bell would sound together, right? Every day, I focus on other problems. Problems that I think are more important than knowing the synchronized time two sources of sound would ring or would be blown, whatever. I have here a proposal for those who are teaching math. If you want our students to be better at what they do in your subject, then maybe you can make word problems relevant to their daily situations. For example, if you are, for, for instance, if you're handing a student athlete who plays lawn tennis, maybe from there, if, and uh, let's say your, your lesson is on, uh, your lesson has something to do with, yes, speed with uh, time. So maybe you can come up with a word problem that would require the student to measure how much time it would take to hit, let's say, 10 balls per a number of seconds, something like that. And I, I also think that the more interested the student is in a certain problem, the more likely he or she would be able to solve it. Solve it. Even if you, do not, if you don't give the formula beforehand, as long as the student could imagine that problem because he or she may have experienced it in the past, or more likely to experience it uh, based on what he or she does, then you would expect 
better results rather than exposing them to problems that they have not encountered and that they will only have to imagine in order to relate to it. So, this is just my musing on the types of tests schools nowadays give to students. These types of tests that fail to anchor um, their assessment tools to uh, in uh, students' relative realities, they set students up for failure right off the bat. And these tests may not help them apply the Pythagorean theorem, okay, finding the greatest or le common factor or least common multiple, algebraic expressions. If okay. I admit these problems have their legitimacy, these weird problems, such as computing for uh, the amount of money when investing in a certain undertaking. That's, I think, a valid item on a test. But if you're expecting first years to be able to relate to investment when, at right off the bat, they're just... Uh, they don't realize that the allowance that they receive daily or weekly is already an opportunity for making investments, for making decisions. So, as a follow-up to my main tip on relativity, maybe what teachers could do is to integrate problems with other subject areas. Like, for instance, going back to the money example in order for a first year to realize that his or her daily allowance can actually be a source of investment maybe the child could be taught um, being a sp spendthrift uh, during values class so you see there's already an integration between values and mathematics I'm not, by the way, a math teacher. I'm a communication teacher who's kind of frustrated about his mathematical abilities. Though I could quite say, without the intent to boast, that my mathematical abilities improved upon graduation. Perhaps it's a developmental thing. The graduate studies test that I took, which had different math problems, I think I fared better there than the one I took for freshman college. There, my attitude was different. In the past, I would use the shotgun technique. I would answer your guess, even if I know it's not right. I still shade the, the, the letter of uh, the answer which I think is correct, or I don't even care if it was correct, as long as I shade all the circles. That's a fine. Or well, excluding the circles that do not give me the answers. Alright? But now, I only... I carefully, deliberately marked the ones that I was certain of. Okay, so that's it for this segment. If you have any contentions, questions, feel free to let me know down below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And then, if you want to hear more of nocturnal stage don't forget to click the subscribe button and then click on the bell icon beside it so this has been nocturnal stage see you in the next upload